So welcome to Thursday's uh, Yoga Inspired Stretch and Flex. I call it Yoga Inspired for a reason because uh, this is not a dedicated yoga workout, but we use a lot of yoga poses and techniques to get our bodies into different positions that we can uh, stretch and align ourselves with. As always, breathing is very important as we do this, so always try to take deep breaths while we're moving from pose to pose. And remember, anytime you feel any kind of discomfort in uh, your joints, ankles, knees, or hips, and in particularly in anywhere in your low back, make sure to take uh, the intensity down just a bit um, so you don't hurt yourself. Um, it's a little chilly where I am in my garage right now. So um, if my feet look very white to you, it's because I have on socks. Uh, it's not because all the blood has rushed out of my body. Uh, so. Um, uh, let's get started down today on the floor. We're going to get started on your hands and knees. We're going to do a little, little bit of mobility work uh, for your low back as well as uh, your breath and to engage your core. And we're going to kind of warm up from the center out today. So just kind of inhale into a cat stretch, tuck your chin to your chest, tuck your hips under, and then exhale into the opposite opposite position, hips out, head up, tuck it in again, and exhale, reverse. One more time. We're going to transition from a few poses here now. So walk your hands just a little bit further than your shoulders, tuck your toes underneath your feet, and we're going to just come to a straight arm plank. You just feel all those muscles engaged to hold the body straight in that position. And now we're just going to press back gentle into piking of the hips and press back to a downward facing dog. Come back forward to that straight arm plank. Drop to your knees. Release the feet and sit back to a child's pose. We're going to repeat those few poses in that sequence. So we'll come back to hands and knees, tuck your toes, lift the knees, elevate into that plank, tighten the muscles in your thighs, really lengthen through the legs. Make sure your shoulders aren't shrugging toward your ears. Now pike the hips up, press through the hands, sit back into your heels. back forward to that straight arm plank, release to the knees, back to your child's pose. One more time through that sequence, up to all fours, straight arm plank, pike the hips, press back. Return to your plank. Drop to the knees, press back to a child's pose. Come back up to all fours. Now bring those hands back underneath your shoulders again. We're going to bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. And just shift your body weight forward. Now you can keep that back knee on the ground if you like, or if you want, you can take that knee off the ground. We're just gonna take that right hand and rotate. Drop that hand to the floor, drop to that back knee if you came off of it, and we're just gonna gently sit back into that left heel, straightening the right leg into a little hamstring stretch. Come back up, return that foot back. So you're all on all fours again. 
left foot to the outside of the left hand and shift your weight forward. I'm going to stay on my back knee this time and just rotate up. Feel free to take that knee off the ground if you like. Drop the hand down and sit back. Come on back forward, return back to all fours. Walk the hands just a little bit out in front of you. Come back to that straight arm plank, lift the knees off. Now I'm gonna give you a choice. You can inch your toes forward towards your hands or you can walk your hands back to your toes. Either way, your hips are gonna pike up. And you're gonna find yourself walking toward a forward fold. If at any time you need to take those hands off the ground, or bend your knees, bring your hands to your feet or to your ankles or to your shins, that's fine. Tighten the muscles in your thighs to lengthen the back of your legs. Again, relax your head and neck. Soften your knees, drop your hips, take a deep breath in. Come up tall, release the hands overhead. And as you come back down with your hands, clasp your hands behind you, roll your shoulders back, press your hands away. <clears throat> Inhale, take the arms wide again, come on overhead. And as you exhale, bend through the hips, protect your low back, come back to the ground with the hands. If your hands don't reach the floor, remember feet, ankles, even shins right here. It's fine, as long as you can keep your back out of the work. Soften your knees, step your left foot back to a lunge, but keep that knee off the ground this time. That foot is right in between your hands. Step that right foot back, pike the hips and press back into a downward dog. Press strong through the hands, like you're trying to bring your chest towards your thighs. Now bend the knees again. We're gonna bring that right foot right back where it was and turn that back foot off of your toes into that warrior position where it's turned, you can get your foot flat. And you can use that right hand into your knee to press yourself all, all the way up. We're gonna keep that right knee bent, that left leg straight. Turn your torso square to the front of you. Take a breath, you can bend that right knee a little bit more without leaning forward through your shoulders. Stack your shoulders over your hips. It helps if you can kind of squeeze your butt underneath you and push forward, make sure you're not sticking your butt out and leaning forward. And just take those arms parallel to the floor into warrior two. We're going to go in both directions here. Sun warrior and extended warrior. So flip that right arm up, tip back like you're trying to bring that left hand to your leg and that right arm back overneath, back on top of you. This is where the breathing is going to help you. So make sure you're not holding your breath to get to these poses. You're letting the breath lengthen, deepen the pose. Now come through, get that right elbow to your knee and that left arm at the same angle as your back leg. So if you drew a line from your left fingers to your left heel, it's a nice straight diagonal line. Try to keep that lower body stationary. So as we move again, it only comes from your core and your torso. We're gonna to go back to warrior two, briefly. And now back to that sun warrior. So again, we're going back in that opposite direction. Elbow back to knee, bring that arm up. Again, find that angle that matches your back leg. And 
And only if you can keep your hips and your lower body stationary without rotating them, you can take that right hand, sneak it to the floor. Again, bring that arm over, match the angle of your back leg. If you can't get there, that's fine. If you're folding your shoulders down to get there, don't do that. Bring that elbow back up to your knee and use your core to rotate. Now just sneak that left hand to the ground, bring it to the center, turn that right foot in. Just kind of relax in a wide leg fold, palms to the floor. Just kind of relax your hips, relax your legs. Now kind of lean your body weight forward, take the weight off of your heels so you can kind of turn your heels in and your toes out. That's going to let your knees bend and your butt drop. Take one hand at a time, come to your knees almost like you're in a sumo squat position and then just slowly come on up. And just relax for a bit. Now this time turn that right foot in, turn that left foot out and start bending into that left side. You can widen your stance if you need to, but again, as you go down, don't lean forward through the shoulders or pull back. We're working on staying balanced and centered over your hips. Tuck under if you need to, make sure you're not sticking your butt out and then take those arms up parallel. Kind of draw your shoulders back a little bit. Now flip that left hand up and let's go back. And as you take that hand over the top, sit the hips down a little bit further. Left elbow to knee, take that top arm over and find the angles. Geometry was one of the only math related classes I did well in in high school. Whenever I do the, these yoga poses, I always think about geometry, angles and lines. It helps me get into the right position. Heel back to warrior two. Flip that hand, bring it back over. Back to warrior two, then back to that elbow. Find that line. And again, just like we did before. Now, so you can have that option to take that front hand to the floor if you want it. Just don't let it compromise your other positions. And now this time, take that right hand to the floor, straddle that left leg, back foot turned onto your toes. Step that left foot back. And we're back into downward dog. Soften your knees, step that right foot in between your feet, excuse me, between your hands. Let that left leg follow. And when you get the feet down, slowly start to lengthen your legs. Bring your hands where they need to be to protect your back, to find that fold. Soften your knees, drop your hips, take a deep breath in, reach wide and high as you come overhead and exhale, arms come down by your sides. Go ahead and step off your mat for a moment, guys. Take a moment, grab some water. When you come on back, come on back to your knees. And just, if you're okay with it, just go ahead and sit down onto your heels. We're gonna keep on working here through hips and hamstrings. 
We're going to do a few more standing poses, then we'll take it back down to the ground. And rather than get to the, some of these poses from standing, we're going to start on the floor and then work our way upward. So hands and knees, right foot to the outside of your right hand. <clears throat> now, anytime we start to straighten legs, and you run into either flexibility problems or hands don't want to stay on the ground just because maybe the length of your arms or inflexibility in your back or your hamstrings, feel free to take those hands up to your leg, to your thighs, to your hips, somewhere that allows you to elevate, but stay in control of the positions. Now, take that back foot, tuck up on your toe. Let that leg leave the ground. And now we're gonna slowly just start to Pike the hips, but straighten that right leg. And again, if your hands don't want to stay on the floor when you do this, you can take one or both hands to that forward leg. It doesn't matter. Bend that back knee again and relax. Here we go again, lift that back knee up, hips up, straighten that front leg. Come on back forward, drop the knee. So now take the hands off the ground and come upright. So you've got the right leg forward and bent, the left leg back and bent. Try to keep the knees both at right angles so you're not way out in front with the foot. You're not way in the back with the foot either. And from here, we're just gonna stand straight up. Straighten both legs, then drop back to that back heel. So both toes are facing the same direction. And now take your hands to the thigh on that front leg. Push the hips back by keeping your abs in tight. Lean it forward and just slowly start to work your hands down towards your ankle. Bend that front leg, come all the way up again. Now take that back foot, turn it to that warrior pose now to where it's facing forward. And keep that front leg bent just for a moment and now straighten it. Now tighten both the muscles in your thighs. Take those arms out. Now we're gonna take those same stretches we just did and turn them into uh, yoga poses. So reach forward and we're just gonna drop that hand down. Again, you can grab the leg high or low or let that hand find the floor. And now just find lines and angles. Just triangle pose. Again, legs are straight. Tighten the muscles in your thighs, hamstrings, hips. Let them work. Now take that top arm and reach till it's parallel to the floor. And now reach the fingers as far forward as they can go as you pull your hips in the opposite direction. And now slowly bend the front leg and come back to where we started, all fours. Now, just so I don't, you don't lose my leg in the camera view, I'm gonna to turn to the other side, but you can stay facing where you are. Let's bring that left foot to the outside of your left hand. Tuck up on that back toe. Let it leave the ground and now press back. Hips high, try to push that right heel down and back. Come back to the ground where we started. Here we go again, lift that back knee up, hips up and then hips back, straightening the front leg.
come back to where you started. Stay down on your knees, but bring your hands up and your torso up. 90 degrees with the legs. The foot is right underneath my knee. And here we go, straight up. Try to push that back heel down, straighten the front leg. Again, both toes are still facing forward. And now pull the hips back, slide that hand down, that left leg. Slowly come on up. Now turn that back foot to your warrior pose. So right foot facing forward, left foot out to the side. Tighten the muscles in both sides so the legs stay straight. Hips are tucked under so you're not sticking your butt out and your head forward. Take those arms out. Strong core, reach and drop. Remember, find a place for that hand, lower high on a leg or to the floor. Now take that top hand, reach it parallel to the floor. Now reach the fingers forward, pull the hips in the opposite direction. Slowly bend that front leg, bring those hands to the floor, wide leg forward fold, just relax in this position. Hips back, head forward. Now keep your hands to the floor as long as they can stay there and you're gonna walk heel toe to those feet are back underneath your hips into that forward fold again. Soften your knees, drop your hips, take a deep breath in, come all the way up. And exhale, arms down by your side. Again, step off your mat for a moment, take a short break. Come on back to your hands and knees when you're ready. All right, let's come on back to all fours. I'm going to take that right foot to the outside of your right hand. And just shift your body weight forward. And we're going to work on directly into hips here. Take that right foot, walk it off the mat, let the toe turn to the side. And there's a bunch of different things we can do here. Take that right hand, just gently press on the inside of the knee going out. You can also drop down to your forearms. You use a little bit of your body weight to add some more flexibility underneath that right side. You can even take that back knee off the ground. Either way, keep your upper body lengthened. Now come back to your hands if you're down on your forearms. And now we're going to walk that right foot back onto the mat and bring it all the way across to your left hand and then drop that knee down toward your right hand. So try to keep that heel away from your body. And if you've done this with me before, you know there's two positions I'm going to try to get you in. I like this position where I can push into the floor with my hands, pull my shoulders back and drop my hips. The other way is just to collapse down to forearms. Use your body weight into that stretch. Either way, we're trying to rotate that left hip bone toward that right heel. And whether you're up or down, just take a gentle turn with your torso toward the right knee. So you just set a little bit of an angle. And again, still work on dropping that left hip bone forward. So if you turn to the right and you also shift to the right, Nothing really has changed. You really got to use that twisting motion by keeping that left hip down. If 
bring those hands back to center. Tuck up on that back toe and use the strength of your hands just to press back to all fours. Come on back to your heels and your left. Good, back to all fours. Left foot to the outside of your left hand. As you shift your weight forward, make sure you, you're constantly changing the position of that foot. So make sure that knee and your ankle line up. Now walk that foot off the mat, turn the toes out to the side and find those different ways. Remember you can push out, you can lift that back knee off the ground. You can drop down to your forearms if that allows you. Bring the hands back down, walk the foot back on and all the way over to your right hand. And gently drop that left knee down. And find those places. Remember, you can stay up with me, push with the hands and use that leverage to drop down or collapse down and let your body weight help you with that stretch. Wherever you are, turn toward that left knee. Remember, right hip this time. Keep it rotated down toward the floor as you make that little twist. Come back to center. And rather than go back to all fours, I just want you to sit into that left hip and roll into a seated position. Hug your knees as you go back. We're gonna stay working on the hips from a supine position. So just drop that right knee, that right foot to the floor. We're gonna cross that left foot over your right knee and just anchor your back to the floor by tightening your abs and push that left knee away. Now keep that left knee crossed and use that left foot to pull the right knee inward, trying to touch the inside of that right knee toward the floor. You may or may not get it there, that's okay. You can put as much or as little pressure with that top foot to push that knee down. Different part of the hip now, up higher up into you. So as. Release that foot off the knee, roll back to a flat back and now cross that right foot over your left knee. Anchor your back to the ground by tightening your abs and push the right knee away. Use that right foot to pull that left knee inward <clears throat> and down. Release that top foot and come back to center. One of my new favorite stretches, uh, bring your knees and feet together and just drop that left knee all the way out to the side. So that right knee is pointing to the ceiling, left knee is as far down as you can. So the right, uh, underneath of your right side, your hip, your low back's probably off the ground a little bit, that's okay. Because what I want to do is we're going to use the right leg to bridge up 
at the same time, you push that left knee into the ground. So it's going to feel like you're bridging on an angle. You should feel the muscles in your glutes tighten as you push up and over. But really drive that left knee into the ground and push that right side up as high as you can and feel that open up. Come on down. Keep that same position. We're going to do that three times. Take a breath. Exhale. Push up and over again. And keep that right knee upward, left knee downward. Come on down. Take another breath in. Exhale. Drive and push. And bring it down. Feet flat, knees up to the ceiling. Take a breath or two. Now let's go on the other side. Let that right knee fall out. Left knee up to the ceiling, right knee into the ground. Here we go. Squeeze, bridge, push the hips up and over. Remember you're anchored on the right side. Come on down. Take a breath and let's go again. Squeeze and push. Come on down, one more time. Breath in, exhale, and take it up. Good, come on down. Knees back together, go ahead and grab them one at a time. Bring them in towards your chest. Push the knees together and just kind of draw a little circle. Get a little bit of release through your low back right there. Change direction. Good. Keep that right knee in your hand. Take that left leg straight out away from you. And pull that left knee in a little bit stronger in toward, toward your chest, toward your shoulder. Now with your left hand, grab that knee and pull it all the way over. The knee is still bent. See how far you can get the knee over? without letting that right side get too high off the ground. And now slowly start to lengthen out and straighten that right leg. This is a good stretch or a pose to identify whether your hip or your hamstring has the flexibility issues. So if you're able to keep the knee bent and bring that leg all the way over or a good bit over, then you know your hips are probably in good shape with the flexibility. But if you get here and you try to straighten out the leg and it doesn't want to go anywhere, that's really where you want to focus on your hamstrings. Bend that knee, roll back to a flat back. Hug both your knees again. Just gently pull them in towards your chest, a little release in your low back. Now keep that left leg in your hand, your left knee, straighten out the right side, hug that left knee in a little stronger. And now use that right hand to bring that left knee across the body toward the floor. And now try to straighten out that left leg. And the knee, roll back, hug both your knees again, tuck your chin to your chest, rock back and forth a few times till you're seated up. I'm gonna stay up for just a moment before we go back down. While we do, just bring your hand to the floor, leverage a nice strong push into the floor to help you push your knees down. and work your way back down to the floor. Both legs straight out on the floor, both arms straight out, palms to the floor. 
want you to lift that right leg straight up as high as it can go without using your hands. Reach all the way across your body. Do whatever you got to do to touch that toe to the floor. Bring it back. Lower it down. Left leg. Lift it up. Reach it all the way across. Do whatever you got to do to touch the floor. We can do that three times on each side. Bring it back. Lower it down. Right leg. Up. Over. Touch. Back. And down. Left the leg. <clears throat> One more time on each. One more time on that left side. Now, just flip over onto your face down. And your body is gonna be in that same position. Arms out, palms down. This one's gonna be a lot different, but it's one of my favorite stretches as well. Right leg, lift it up as high as you can. Bring it all the way across your body. Do whatever you gotta to do to try to touch that foot to the floor. Come on back, lower it down. Left leg, lift, turn. Keep your hands down. You can let your hips roll as much as they want to. Three times to each side. Right side, here we go, lift, turn. Left side, up and over. One more time to each. Bring those hands under your shoulders, push up, come to all fours, sit back to a child's pose stretch. up to all fours now we're going to just take that child's pose stretch to a new level and just rotate it so take that right arm reach all the way underneath palm up to the sky try to drop that right shoulder all the way to the floor underneath you and then sit back into your heels again and as you sit back with your hips walk both fingers on the left hand forward hips up Let's switch it over. Left arm, dig it under. Get that shoulder under as far as you can go. Sit back with your hips, walk the fingers forward. Come on back to all fours. Now we're gonna tuck the toes underneath you, walk the hands back to your knees, kind of push off your knees and get into a kind of a crouch position to where you're on the balls of your feet, your heels are off the ground. And you know where we're gonna go from here. We're gonna go straight up into a forward fold. So as we straighten our legs, remember, find that proper spot for your hands. You can keep them on the floor, bring them to your feet, ankles or shins. Soften your knees, drop your hips, take a deep breath in, come all the way overhead. Connect the hands on top, interlace your fingers, draw your shoulders back without arching your low back. Release the hands forward, let them come back behind you. Interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders back, press your hands away. Remember, pull from the shoulders, not from the low back. and release the hands. You guys are done for the day. Y'all should be three inches taller and a lot more dexterity. Feel free to come back live, say hi or say goodbye. Thank you, time. Rusty.